Ireland King and Mom Michelle know the effect of the pandemic on mental health. I didn't want to leave my room. I didn't even feel like eating. I didn't, my family thought I didn't like them because I was so rude all the time. She basically came out and said she didn't want to be here anymore. More than once. The Indiana family is by no means alone. We describe it as a mental health tsunami going on. That tsunami has millions of Americans grasping for relief. Medication therapy might be the medical go-tos, but that's not always the answer. Some people act different to medications. It doesn't always work for people. A lot of times medication is trial and error. Stigma, lack of equity and access, and a mental health worker shortage are all challenges for people seeking help. Experts say there are some options, low-cost ones, for the individual. A quick search of the app store with mental health shows dozens of apps designated for just that ranging from something that allows you to check in with yourself on a daily basis to connecting you with a licensed professional. Some other ideas include jotting down what makes you happy, getting movement or exercise, journaling, finding an outlet like music, video games, or art, and joining an online or in-person support group. When you identify that, do it. There's power in doing what makes us happy. These are things that people need to do, of course, before we get into crisis, but being proactive. It's not just up to the individual, though. And lots of times it's really hard for people to do anything individually because they're paralyzed by the anxiety or the fear or the depression or whatever. And, and it's hard for them to really be proactive in helping themselves. Psychologist Dr. Thomas Plant says employers, bosses, family and friends can start with a simple I get that. We need, in some respects, we need to journey with people in solidarity. You know, we need to be with them. And we say, you're anxious, I get that, I get anxious. You're depressed, I get depressed. You know, you're feeling suicidal, I don't blame you. You know, the, you know, the, the world's a mess. And beyond that, they can follow up. I'm happy to check in with you, to remind you that I care about you, that I remind you that you're not alone. Family Education Resource Center, this is Betty speaking. Another option, a warm line. Well, we're not clinicians or doctors, so we don't make diagnoses. Warm lines aren't crisis hotlines, but a tool for people before they're in dire straits. There's more than 100 in the U.S., the majority staffed by people like Betty Foster, who have firsthand experience. We're all primary caregivers of someone with a mental health challenge, even myself. So I have a family member that I was a primary caregiver for. And some of our advocates are still that primary cat, uh, caregiver for someone. Hi, thank you for calling the phone. It's not a call for help, but it is a call to help. Because as Betty puts it, if you see someone on the street and you're like, yeah, you don't know what's going on with that person. And you also don't know what's going on with the person who looks good, who looks well, you know, for that you may think ah, they've got it all together. You don't know because mental illness doesn't have that kind of face. Meanwhile, the King search for more help for Ireland. She's lived through the COVID health crisis. There needs to be something. Something needs to change. I'm not willing to let her slip through the cracks and, and no other family should either. Now among the millions hit by the mental health crisis. Lindsay Thies, Newsy.